that would like to make six hundred million dollars. <laughs> I don't think collectively in everything I do that uh, I don't think the three of us collectively could get to that. Amen. But you guys talk about that number and it's a huge number. And just a part of that is 20,000 scholarships that have been awarded since 1957. How many towns in Texas don't have 20,000 people in them? A lot. Well, 254 counties in the great state of Texas. And you think of the county seat, and a lot of those places might only have 500 people in them. Then you've got Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, San Antonio, Austin. Well, the other thing about those scholarships, too, is it's not, hey, let's give you $500 a semester. Like, these are fully funded scholarships. Yeah. Maintain an academic average, and it goes on the third year, and then you maintain averages, and you go on and have graduate opportunities for graduate study. Pretty doggone cool is what it is. Pretty proud to be affiliated with it, even in the lightest manner. So look, uh, the first ladies to enter the arena, the survey pivot riders are going to be the last ones to leave it. Understand that the lights are going to switch a little bit as those horses ride out. So prepare for that. At this time, friends, we'd like to ask you to stand for our invocation. And then please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and our national anthem. Gentlemen, please remove your hats. Thank you. Again, remain standing for our invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance and our national anthem. Our invocation tonight will be given by one of our Rodeo Houston scholars. This is Julie Diaz. Hi, I welcome you to pray with me. Father God, we thank you for today and every day of our lives. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives, and we ask that you continue to protect our men and women serving our country. Please bring them home safely. We also ask that today will be a successful event, that you continue to protect each participant from the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. We ask that you continue to guide our path closer to you. Bring us peace and comfort us, Lord. Guard our heart. Your word says that all things are possible through you, Lord. So give us strength. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray all this. Amen. Amen, Julie. Thank you for that. Our national anthem salute is brought to you by Cavender's Boot City. Benjamin Burns from Challenger Elementary will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. The, Star the Star Spangled Banner will be performed by a special guest vocalist from Nashville, Tennessee, Jamie Fugate. And carrying our nation's flag, Shelby Pearson. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud Twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming.
you to Cavender's Boot City. Okay, folks, we're about, uh, let's call it 45 seconds away from joining television live on Telemundo and Valley Sports Southwest. We're already on the Cowboy Channel. Need a little help from all of you. When this Hall of Famer, the voice of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, Bob Tallman, comes on screen and starts saying, hello, Houston, we want to hear this Kenny Chesney crowd erupt and prove to everybody the greatest rodeo fans in the world are in Houston. So get ready and stand by. Texas. My partners, Boyd Paul Hamas and Andy Silers. I should say dear friends because they do all the work. I get to have all the fun. Come on. Tonight in this 16th performance, we're getting serious of who's going to have a chance, chance to run at that $50,000. And uh, it's kind of a do or die like it has been getting to this position. But this is big time pro rodeo. Well, as we all know, the cream rises to the top. So now that all the Super Series are done, when we get to a semifinal like tonight, there's no way to camouflage the amount of talent that is in the Super Series, especially in the tie-down roping. you got world champion Marcus Costa, world champion Tough Cooper, world champion Haven Medjid. You've got the number one guy in the world, Riley Webb, and that's just four out of the ten guys that get to rope here tonight. It is going to be fun watching. And that's just one contest. Right. It's spread all over the place. And in the Saddle Bronx, I was looking at a matchup that really intrigued me and I don't want to give you the name of the horse because I still want to leave some meat on the bone. But Chase Brooks of Montana has a very, very good draw. And this is the easiest path to the 50,000. You don't want to have to go to the wild card, so Chase needs to take advantage of it tonight. And that's a great point because if you're one of the six that don't advance tonight to the finals, you got to go through a wild card on Friday and Saturday, folks, and that's a long road you don't want to travel. Let's go down to the arena floor and meet the fourth member of our broadcast team. Here's the talented Patty Smith. Thank you so much, Boyd. Yes, I am down here on the star stage where Kenny Chesney will be performing in just a couple of hours. But in the meantime, I too am going to pick a cowboy. And Boyd, as you mentioned, this tie-down roping competition is stacked. I could have picked any of them, but I have honed in on the Brazilian Marcus Costa. Not because he's ranked number 12 in the world, not because he's a four-time qualifier, and not because he's a 2017 world champ. I chose him because of the nice things he had to say about his wife, Kayla. Kayla is a big support for me. She's been on my side all the time, all my injuries, and helping me get through all this. I always push me forward, you know, and um, it's hard to find a word to explain how important she is on my life. Marcos came out of Super Series 4, won the guitar and the cooler, and he's looking to parlay that into a chance at that $50,000 check, guys. Thank you, Patty. It's win or go home as we kick things off in uh, the tied down roping. That's your first contest of your first semifinal. Boot Barn brings it your way. And we're looking at last year's champion, John Douch. He had to make it through the semifinals and wild card to get to that final four on the championship day. And he made that worth 50 grand. There are the aforementioned Mayfield Cooper, 
Costa and Midget, all world champions, and Riley Webb's number one. And again, six of these guys aren't going to make it tonight. Which four will? We're about to find out. We let out the clutch with a son of a world champion, Sterling Smith. Free time qualifier to the national finals. On about five grand in Super Series number two. We'll set the pace for everyone to follow, but the loop does not go on, so in no time. Uh, that's not an interesting way to start. We always like to have somebody set the bar. He chased that gap to about the 50-yard line on a football field in NRG. When you get to that point, it's either pitch it or go home. Tanner Green, 24 years old, roping against the superstars. Catula, Texas. Now this kid's won nearly a quarter of a million dollars at the age of 24. He works three events. Ah, he didn't even, he didn't even reach for his slack. He was out of rope. Ooh, he came out of Super Series number three about a week and a half ago. Now unofficially, we're looking at a 15 second flat run. We go by the rule book that you will get back on your horse ride forward and allow six seconds for that calf to get through. Well, and Bob, you mentioned him missing that slack. That's why he couldn't control the calf at the end of the rope, and that's why it cost him that extra time. It was a great shot. Bobby T called it in real time. When he bailed off the back of that horse, he no longer had the slack of that rope in his hand, which affected the way he was able to get from his horse to the calf. And, Everything that happened after that, well, you saw it with your own two eyes. Let's go to another guy that advanced out of Super Series number three. This is 23-year-old Macon Murphy. He was a high school basketball player point guard. Peach Eye, Louisiana, coming off his first trip to the national finals. Now, he held on to his. Gets the calf up, clears him. Look out, folks. There's money in the making right here. Oh, he wants that tie back. He was on his way to be in the low nines. But there's a second wasted right here. See how he wrapped around the hoof of that calf? And man, he'd like to have that back. 10 and 9 for Megan. Speaking of having something back, let's take a look back and show you some of the talent in this field. That's world champion Chad Mayfield. We're going to show you his run from round two of Super Series number five. It's one of the fastest times we had seen this year, and he had to go a long ways to get it. He was eight and one in his Super Series. It helped him advance to where we are now. I'm telling you what, this Shad Mayfield, if he keeps that up, it's gonna be hell to pay for everybody else. 6'3", 200 pounds, number six ranked tie down roper in the world. 22 years young. Won $6,500 in our last Super Series. Oh, he scored beautifully. Let that calf out. Now you see him hold out of that slack. So important. Look out, folks. Mayfield is making money. The nickname is Money Mayfield, and he is cashing in again with a 9.8 for the number seven, or actually number six man in the world. Look at that grimace. As he pulls the slack and holds on to it. See his right hand still holding on to that rope? Well, that's exactly what you want to maintain as you dismount your horse. Just good stuff, Bobby G. I think your word is control, and it was so well said. Boy, took you through it step for step. And I mean literally. Tough with one F. T-U-F Cooper. 16 years as a pro, the 14 times he's been to the big show at the Wrangler NFR. Folks, he's 33 years old and he's won, well, nearly three and a half million dollars. Now he is seventh in the world standings. But his concern is to be one of the four that goes on. Out of the semifinals, number one, get a bounce, get him up now. Big and string, here's where you're gonna make it or break it. And he made it, yeah, buddy. Woo! Second place unofficially. Rapping a hooey though, Bob, right? Yes, sir. Did he do the rapping a hooey, Andy? I, yes. I, yes. Okay. yes. Yes, so he folks, did. So, folks, he's gambling a little bit on this calf staying tied. Most folks go around the calf's back legs twice, and then uh, he only went around them once. 
The good news is the calf did indeed remain tied. So Cooper moves into the number two spot with a 10-1. Right now the cut line to advance is 15 flat. But we need to tell you about Marcus Costa. And I don't know that we've made this point since he's been here. This young man left Brazil at the age of 14 to chase a lifetime dream. To become a world champion. To beat the best in the world in tie-down roping. That dream was realized in 2017. Since he left Brazil, he's won over a million dollars, leaving his family to behind to create his own. Now a hard running calf for Patty's pick. Calf standing when he gets there. Keep hustling, Marcus. Calf's gonna kick on him. And at 13-4, he now becomes the cut line. Very good point, Andy. There's four guys left to go, and they all have to, at least at this juncture, be faster than 13-4, or they're going home. Well, the 19th man ranked in the world, and I'm looking down through here, guys. There is not anybody here that isn't in the top 30. We talk about how many world champions, past Houston champions, Lane Livingston comes from out at Seymour, Texas. Now, he was 19th in the world last year, so he got to watch the Wrangler NFR on the Cowboy Channel. Kids won $300,000. He won Tucson. Cast for Wyoming last year. Houston, that's the gun you want on your resume. Bounce him up. Look out, folks. It's at 7 1. Ooh. A minute ago, Boyd was about putting it out about making that bobble a bobble can turn into a bubble and a bubble can pop when you get in that position 10 and 9 is going to tie him for third and fourth and now 10 and 9 is the cut line or the chopping block spot as Andy would say so a lot of people talk about the size of the cattle because it affects you know how you handle them and we asked Matt Shizawa what about the size of the calves we're roping here these calves are weigh approximately 250 to 300 so you got to have good technique and some strength and some finesse to make this happen. Well, at 42 years of age, north of $2 million and 11 trips to the national finals, Matt's been handling all types of calves for going on two decades. Again, needs to be quicker than 10 and 9 to put himself in a spot to advance. Calf standing when he gets there. String the front leg, gather in time. Nine and six will move him all the way to the top and guarantee that he moves on. Well, I saw him at lunch today and he said he'd been over here already this morning early and they tie all these calves down every day before the show. Look at that. At the age of 42, I'm proud to say I'm a native Nevadan and boy, you watched his early high school and college career. Oh yeah, he was a, he's a native Nevadan too from the Moapa Valley. All-state point guard. Well, right now, Lane Livingston, his 10-9 is in trouble. Macon Murphy is out. Macon Murphy is headed to the wild card, as is Marcus Costa, Tanner Green, and Sterling Smith. That means this world champion, the 2019 Haven Medjid from Miles City, Montana, has to be 10-9 or faster. 10, 9, or faster. There's the 9. Let the bay horse run. Hard running calf. Rides up. Sticks him. On the ground. Midget. Balls him in. Strings. Gathers. And uh-oh. And you can look at his face, and it'll tell you all you need to know. 12 and 9. That dog doesn't hunt. And that first wrap is so important. If you don't get that first wrap tight, it's so much easier for cattle to kick loose when you're trying to finish the tie. But, fellas, this next story is one that's so much fun to watch. Riley Webb, the reigning resist all rookie of the year, currently sits number one in the world. And at the age of 19, in his first trip to Houston, if he wants to advance to championship Sunday, he has to be quicker than 10 and 9. 10 and 9 for this year's champion at the National Western in Denver. 
Won almost 5,000 this year in the Super Series. Got a good calf. Now, go down the rope, finish the job. String on the front leg, hustle, Riley! He'll take one step forward to make sure that it becomes official. And it will at 10.1, the 19-year-old rising sensation has punched his ticket to Sunday. I don't care how you look at it, you have watched 10 of the greatest heroes of the moment in professional rodeo in this arena. This is amazing. They had to lay it on the line. Boyd told you, Andy told you, I told you. Right there, the Montana, right here, the New Mexico Flash. Folks, they did it all. For those of you that are watching on TV, it's okay to cheer them on. Jump up. Yeah, he said, I'll take it, Shizawa. There's Sterling, wishing that it could have been different. There's Tough, watching that six seconds. Matt Shizawa. 9-6, Chad Mayfield of the 9-8, Tough Cooper, 10-1, Riley Webb, 10 and 1. Those are the four moving on, and a big thank you to Boot Barn. This is the Rodeo Houston Super Series. Here's how it works. We invite 40 of the top competitors in each of our eight events. They're divided into five Super Series. Each one of those events is three rounds. When they conclude, the four highest money winners advance to one of our two semifinals. There are 10 in each of the semifinals. We take the top four from semifinal one and semifinal two and advance them to the championship. The six that do not advance from each semifinal get one more chance. They'll go to one of our wild card competitions. The winner of each wild card will advance to the championship. They join the others for a shot at the $50,000. The event winners from each Super Series will receive a 52-quart ultralight cooler from Arctic Outdoors and a custom Les Paul-style electric guitar created especially for Rodeo Houston champions. And that's how the revolutionary Rodeo Houston Super Series works. Pick your spot to stick around because bareback riding coming up next. Anyone who knows rodeo knows there's nothing more important than safety. That goes for our fans too. The Crown Royal Riders want everyone to make it home safely. As you enjoy Rodeo Houston, please make sure to always assign a designated driver. Crown Royal wants you to drink responsibly. Well folks, time's running out. We're clicking through this thing we call Rodeo Houston about four more nights after today. And for every reason you can't get a ticket to come back, don't worry, you got a ticket in your living room. Thanks to Valley Sports Southwest, the Cowboy Channel, and Telemundo, you can watch every performance that is remaining of Rodeo Houston from the comfort of your living room. So again, check us out on Telemundo, the Cowboy Channel, and Valley Sports Southwest. Hey, if you're interested in using in our caption opportunities, we're going to make it easy for you. Just point your camera right now at the QR code on the center screens, and it will take you directly to our closed caption mobile app. Thank you to Cavender's Boot City for sponsoring our hardworking arena crew. They're down in the dirt, on the shoots, making it all work behind the scenes. Somebody went to see the face painter at Rodeo Houston. Looking good as the fans continue to gather on this gorgeous evening. In Houston, Texas, and the bareback riders are all stretched out and ready to roll. Thank you to Chevron. They bring you the bareback bronc riding one year ago. This guy not only won Rodeo Houston, he would go on to win his first world championship. That was Jess Pope, but look at here. Tim O'Connell's got a handful. 
Rocker Steiner was only one point away from winning this rodeo a year ago. And Cole Reiner is the defending champion of our super shootout from last year. So pretty good watching as we start with a guy that's got a great horse. Tim O'Connell, Zulu warrior of the Calgary Stampede. That's the bay horse underneath him. They were 87 on this horse at San Antonio. And Tim O'Connell looks to do more of the same. There are so many rodeos that he has checked off his bucket list. He's won Caldwell, Cheyenne, he just won Tucson, but he's trying to win Rodeo Houston. 85 and a half for Timmy. Yes. So, I say 85 and a half advances. I'm going to have a tendency to agree with you. Maybe not at the top. No, no. I got 85 and a half will yeah. be a top four score. I'll, I'll buy that. Okay. Which is what Tim wants. He just wants to go to the next one. Waylon Bourgeois. Church Point, Louisiana. Now, folks, he's 23 years old, and this horse is 20. Going to be 21 years old. They call him Good Time Charlie. He has been to the Wrangler National Final 16 times. You watch him. Oh, my goodness. Look at the Cajun. Look at the Cajun kick. Look at that horse. Woo! There is nothing in the world that tells you if you take care of a good horse, they're going to take care of you, Andy. Oh, my goodness. I see a yellow flag on the ground. That was my question, Bob, when I watched the replay. Yeah. The first jump out of the chute, he spurs over the neck. I mean, that's good. You want to be high up in the mane of that horse. But on that first jump, your feet have to be in contact. Watch his right leg. It's going to, or the left actually, is going to go over the top of the mane of the horse. That first jump out, that results in a no score. Whalen is headed to the wild card. Dang it. Dylan Montana's Tristan Hansen, a Pete Carr Pro Rodeo horse named Exotic Dancer. They were 88 and a half at Angelo on this horse. A lot of power. From Exotic Dancer traveling from one side of the arena to the other. Now half the score for how the Cowboy rides, his control and spurring motion. The other half for how hard the horse is to ride, the degree of difficulty, change of direction. 73 points for Mr. Hanson, 73. Well, there's a young guy that's been winning uh, the hearts and minds of rodeo fans all across the country. It's this guy who was last year's resist all rookie of the year in the bareback riding. He came within one point of being the champion of Houston last year in his rookie season. This is Rocker Steiner. And uh, following in the footsteps of his world champion father and grandfather. Steiner on zipper trick. Survey Championship Rodeo. Horse has got a few moves. Rocker! Woo! Who is the wildest? Tim or the horse? It bo its boat was pretty wild, Bob. Nobody can get in this kind of shape and come back perfect. Everything that he wants. Oh, there it is. Oh, that'll get you out of shape. That'll get you a broken hip. Folks, he's gonna be number 279, Rocker. I know you're upset. 79, you might be okay, buddy. Couple of rematches coming your way now, folks. So Taylor Broussard of Esterwood, Louisiana has a horse he had in Denver. In Denver, he was 87 points. That was back in January. On this horse, 29-year-old, two-time NFR qualifier. Midnight snag from the Survey Championship string. O'Connell came out and punched everybody in the face with an 85 and a half. And here we go again. That left leg spurring over the top of the main, the first jump out. You'll see it again right here, just like what happened with Wayland. You see how that left leg went over the top of the horse's mane? That means you missed the horse out. You see the yellow flag drop? Some tough luck for Taylor. He's headed to the wild card. 
And do you think when the guy's 79 or 80 and he thinks he's in trouble, you've seen two major mistakes, they're all right. Well, how much value goes in knowing the horse you have? Oren Larson has a horse named Naked Baby. Easy, easy. Can we get her around? <laughs> my name is what? I did say naked. Maybe I was supposed to say naked. No, naked. Well, the difference between naked and naked is pretty substantial. Yes, that is true. What do you think, Warren? Just get her over a little bit. Yeah. You got this. Come on, Warren! Come on! All right, Oren, we're off to a good start. Straight down the pin goes the Bay Horse with four white socks. Now watch, he holds that mark out just a little bit longer. Wants to show the judges I am in control. My feet are where they are supposed to be. He follows the rules, goes to number two by half a point. 79 and a half for Mr. Larson. Well, you just watched a guy that's 6'1". Now you're going to watch a guy 6'2", two, two and a half, maybe 6'3". R.C. Landingham. He was the college champion from Blue Mountain College back in 2009. This horse called Wyatt Earp. Yancey Day, where Boyd was, he watched him at Denver be 87 points on him. Just put it this way. This horse has been to the National Finals Rodeo in the Bronx ride. You put him in the bareback ride, and that ought to free him up a little bit. Anybody watching from California? Go ahead. He's from way up north. Oh, paint. Go straight. I didn't think that horse had that many moves in him by what I was told. Well, he had a big one first jump out. And when he goes to the right, then back to the left, RC does an excellent job keeping that spur stroke going. Has to be more than 73. 83 points. We'll put him number two. Excellent. Okay. Chad Rutherford has his hands full. He's got a horse from the series called Prairie Fire. So far this year, this horse has bucked off Cooper Cook in San Antonio. Bucked off Seth Hardwick at the National Western in Denver. Rutherford's number 12 in the world. An NFR qualifier, college rodeo from McNeese State University. He was 89 in Fort Worth. He'd like to do that here. He's got to survive the fire. Prairie fire. There you go. Come on, Chad. Yes, sir. Oh, that's awesome right there. That guy goes at it hard. Got to be more than 79 points. So that's what you got to ask yourself. Is that ride better than 79? Because it has to be to advance to the semifinal. And yes, indeed it is. 83 and a half. Now the next man you're going to watch is Cole Reiner, who travels with six-time world champion Casey Field. We asked him, what's that done for your riding? The focus that Casey brings to the table and, and the way that he can communicate that and, and uh, really help me hone in on, on my moment and when I need to be ready and how I need to prepare it has changed a lot for me and, and really stepped up my game. Well, ever since he jumped in the truck with those guys, he's made it to three national finals after winning the 2020 Resist All Rookie of the Year. He's got a national final horse called Worth the Whiskey. There's some change of direction. But he will bump into the fence there towards the end of the ride. That will hinder his efforts, Bobby. Well, it slows him down at least a jump, maybe two. Everything looks so good at this point. He's firing, the horse is firing. Horse gets to the wall. Now, that'll take at least two jumps out of him. But when he comes back, 
everything the horse and Cole Reiner. Still going to put him in with 83 and a half. Be happy with that, buddy. So now the cut line becomes 83 points. For a man that grew up in the Woodlands, Texas, Richie Champion. He's earned over $2 million in his career. He's got a national finals bucking horse called Control Freak. 83 or more to advance. Come on, Richie. It's times like these, fellas. I am so happy I don't carry a pencil. Me too, buddy. It's a really nice effort. Champion doing what he's been doing for a decade or more. Just showing you up. Always in control. Never out of shape. Is he more than 83 points? If not, he's got to go the wild card route. We're all looking at the board, him included. Waiting for the judges to tell us their verdict. O'Connell, Reiner, and Rutherford are guaranteed to move on. Landingham is sitting there waiting along with champion. 84 points for Richie. That'll put him in the number two spot. And we will see him on Sunday. Well, and for the highlights that we're going to look back for the four, that's what a bareback rigging looks like. Oh, and that's what a Rocker Steiner, that is an Oren Larson, that is an R.C. Landingham. Folks, you couldn't have bought a ticket on a better night to watch anybody better. There's the hottest rookie in the world, the Rocker Steiner. Three-time champion of the world a moment ago, Bourgeois and Jed Rutherford. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how you ride fucking horses in the semifinals. Boyd's prediction was right. The 85 and a half for Tim O'Connell moves on along with champion Reiner and Rutherford. A big thank you to our friends helping us sponsor the bareback riding Chevron. If you're getting up, sit back down. If you're changing the channel, don't. Team Ropers are up when we come back to Houston. Hey, rodeo fans, join today's Chick-fil-A Houston Selfie Race. Three lucky fans will battle it out across Houston, making their way to the finish line right here in NRG Stadium. Here's how to play. Step one, take a selfie. And here's the best way. Step two, upload your selfie on Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag Rodeo Houston. Welcome to the the race will take place in just a few minutes, so send in your selfies now. Welcome to the show. Thank you to Houston Methodist, the official health care providers for the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo and supporters of Rodeo Houston Sports Medicine, caring for our rodeo athletes. Okay, if I got a place for you to go to, it's called the Fan Zone. Presented by Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. Here's the deal, folks. These are our Rodeo Houston athletes, bullfighters, our royalty. It's section 103 and 124. Take the kids, get a selfie. See that lady in red? She carries our American flag. Oh, Miss Rodeo Beauties. Section 103 and 124. A beautiful day outside of NRG Stadium. But everything is heating up on the inside as the competition continues. We are into the semifinals of our Super Series competition. And it rolls on with the Team Ropers. They come in in pairs, brought to you by Mrs. Bears and KHOU 11. At the end of 22, it was world champion Clay Tryon and Jake Long that took $100,000 as a duo. But this is a stacked field in our first semifinals. World champion Thorpe 
world champion Smith. You've got champs all over the place, national finals qualifications. This will be fun. Let's start it with a team that came out of Super Series 2. Tanner James, Evan Arnold, Porterville, California, Stephenville, Texas. Now they're going to break a barrier, and here's why. When you're the first team to go, you do not have the luxury of seeing how everybody else does. So your job is to come out and get one rope as fast as you can. And sometimes you get a little antsy and you don't give the steer the head start required. So it's a 10 second penalty for breaking the barrier. That turns a five and four into a 15 and four. Well, if I was a betting man, I'd bet that Boyd would pick the next team and he and Patty Spicks. Paul David Tierney, born and raised in the Dakotas from Oklahoma City, Tanner Braden. Tanner Braden at the heel end is in the top 30 right now. He's from Dewey, Oklahoma. They in Super Series number five won sixteen thousand dollars. Yeah, well, they're going to the they're going to the the wild card now. Yeah, from champ to jump and all in one jump, and you just watched them jump. Sixteen thousand. All right. Semi or Super Series five. Everybody breathe. I'm breathing. Okay. Just a little heavy. That's all. Cody Snow and Wesley Thorpe. Seven trips to the national finals for the man on the right of your screen. Californian doing the heading duties. World champion Texan, that's Wesley Thorpe. And that's why. 6.3, all we needed was a little more oxygen. Just a couple of deep breaths and we take care of our jobs. Thank you for the therapy, Mr. Siler. You needed it. Very much appreciated. Let's go to Brenton Hall, big tall cowboy, the horn catching side, Peyton Bray, 2019 yep. Resist Hall Rookie of the Year on the left of your screen. 23 year old header, 24 year old healer, couple of young guns. Living dangerously. Horns and heels. That was pretty. Well, Patty ought to be happy. You just moved to the lead by one tenth of a second. Folks, if you've ever roped in the pasture, once you get past the barrier, you're on a football field. That's like roping in a pasture. And as you watch Colton Smith and Jake Miner go, these guys are barely ranked in the world. A big win here could be good. Colton. He is a Canadian. Jake Miner lives close, Ellensburg, Washington. Asian Odd. Boy, oh, did get out good. Oh, pretty around the horn. Quick with the heels. Oh, plus five. Could he have tracked him a little more? Maybe. That'll take him. If he would have rode both feet, though, Bobby T, they would have gone to the lead, but it's a five second penalty for catching that outside leg at 11 and one. So that means we have four qualified times, two penalty free and two with penalties, basically 15 and four or faster now. We're Tomlinson and Smith, but they gotta be in that six country. They cannot take a chance and leave the door open for somebody else. There you go, guys. That'll split the, no actually that'll put them in the number one spot. By one tenth of a second, the young gun to the horns and the old veteran. And he's not old, Patrick. Well, he's 43. No, that's 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 the new 33. Okay, he's got kids roping in high in high school rodeo now. Levi Simpson of Pinoca, Alberta, Canada. 2016 world champ, a four-time Canadian champ. Corey Hendrick. Doing the healing duties after winning Hempstead last year and picking up a pretty decent check in Tucson. Advanced out of the third Super Series. Must be faster than 11-1. How about five and three? Now Canada and Texas have united to go all the way to number one. 
Oh, well, I like the way that head catch went on, Boydy. Oh, I'm high on that healer right there. I've known that kid since he was a baby. His mom and dad are dear friends of mine, and boy, it's good to see. He's got a twin brother named Cash. Andy, you and I watched him rope together at the college finals, the twins, but now Corey is roping with Levi doing good. Bubba and Cole. Here's Buckaloo to the horns. Davis into the heel. <clears throat> so why? Here's why. Five three six one six two six three. It's no longer easy to advance anymore, folks. You can't just swing over one and decide you're going to be safe and place with a seven-second run. You got to take chances. They did, and the next two teams are going to have to do the same thing. Well, they've got a shot by money at seven thousand one coming in. Junior Tees. He's at the head and he gets a little reckless, and I think that's just what happened. No, what happened was the tail of his rope caught his loop. Watch this. His tail, the tail comes up and hits his loop. Oh, it should have been on this side when he started. Yeah, I think it may have clipped the barrier, but that's not a foul if it clips the tail of your rope. So it's going to be a no time. Final team to try, Marcus Terrio and Cole Curry. They have to be quicker than six and three if they want to advance. That's all you need to know, folks. Six, three or faster, Marcus to the horns. Cole to the feet. Grab him, son. Yeah. Well, you gave him, you gave him room to do it, and they took a full second off of your challenge in that five and four. That'll put him in the number two spot of the best four here tonight with a five, three, four, six, one, and a six, two. You just watch the team rope and come alive at about team number six. That is where it all started to get better. Pressure creates a couple of things. Diamonds and coal. Do you become the fuel for everyone else's fire? Or when the pressure mounts, do you shine the brightest? Took a couple of good times in the middle to bring out some of the quickest times we've seen this year. As the smoke comes, Whenever that heel shot comes your way and a look of disgust when it doesn't. Here's who will advance. It's Simpson and Hendrick with that five and three. Terrio and Curry, Tomlinson and Smith, Hall and Bray are all moving on to Sunday as we say thank you to Mrs. Bairds and KHOU 11 for sponsoring the team rope. We're moving on to Sunday. We're moving on to Bronx Riding when we get back to NRG in Houston. Make the most of your day at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. After the concert, take a fast trip on a wild ride or relax and enjoy a bird's eye view of NRG Park outside at the Carnival. Relax in the Champion Wine Garden presented by Frost Bank and raise your glass with award-winning wines from around the world. Pick up your boots and dance to live music in the hideout every night from 6 p.m. till midnight. The hideout, presented by Jim Beam, is designed especially for rodeo fans over 21. So stick around. There's something for everyone at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. If you would like to use our caption app, you can. They're available on your mobile device. Folks, scan the QR code on the screen right now to take you straight to our closed caption mobile app. There's a good look at our arena crew. Those are the talented folks working the gates, chutes, and equipment, and they are sponsored by Avenger's Boot City. Oh, like that hat, young man. Like those smiles. Hope y'all are having a good time on this first semifinal night. I like the leopard. Uh, looks good. Oh, we dress them up when we go to the rodeo. That's right. In Houston, we have our own style. And it's good. Santa Rock riding is the stylish event. Energy transfer. Proudly presents it. Sage Newman won it one year ago here. He'll be back tomorrow night to try to 
Look at the, look at this. Right or right, world champ. Jacob Scully, world champ. Zeke Thurston, three time and reigning world champ. Woo! I don't know how you cut the cows out of this herd, but it's gonna be good watching. They had Lefty Holman in there. He's a reserve world champ. Here's Isaac Diaz. Isaac Diaz lives in the farming community of Des Demona, Texas. But Dandy Delight, here is the challenge. This horse has bucked off a couple of guys in San Antonio. Oh, you watch this big road from the Calgary Stampede. Wow, wow, wow. They just won a big check on him the other day at 87 points at the American in Arlington, Texas. And look at that guy spur. I, I, you know, sometimes you just get in the zone. And here in Houston, Isaac has been in the zone. I mean, he's just been riding really superbly throughout the entire rodeo here in Houston. And it's just really good to see that seven-time NFR qualifier flash that smile. He knows he did well. Okay. 86 and a half. Nicely done. Yes. Rematch. And the last time he had this horse, it wasn't good. Right or right, had this horse in Kennewick, Washington. 75 points. Get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it. Come on. Come on, Ryder. Bertie Hoers, Flax and Maine. Boyd, the stutter step, not once, but twice. Watch right there, now watch him gather the second time. Kicking straight flat like that, that makes it tough to ride. Yeah, it just messed with riders' timing. And 78 points on the business girl for Ryder Wright. As he walks back in that blue camouflage, Jacobs Crawley of Stephenville, Texas will be next. The 34-year-old Texas A&M grad. And another rematch. He's got a serving horse called Found Me. He's 80 points on this horse here last year. And I think you guys would agree, I don't think 80 points is gonna be enough to get you out of this semifinals. Zay's Newman was 85 and a half on this horse in San Antonio. Now he gets that spur in motion going. Toes turned out for the Aggies. Kind of an awkward start though. Well, another one of those flax and main horses and kind of bucked like the one before it. Bob talked about the stutter step. To your point, it took 83 and a half to advance in the bareback riding. I think that's a good bottom number to think you're going to need to be in the bronc riding as well. 78 for the former college national champ. Now look, folks, Shorty Garrett and Isaac Diaz travel together. We asked Shorty to describe Isaac's spurring style. Isaac's hit fire, hit fire. <laughs> uh, all speed and no control, not as good as mine. <laughs> friends having a good time. Get him off this gate, guys. Let's go, guys. There's the deep breath before you say, let's go. Get your feet going. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Left foot trying to work. He got rocked to the left, Bob. Oh, yeah. Man. Second jump, I think. Watch the second jump. He's gonna go into his riding arm right there. And now it's all about trying to fight his way back over to the center, don't you think? I totally agree. Your hips regulate your feet. Your feet rep represent your upper body. Your rein hand takes care of your whole body. Not able to get all of that together. Well, Isaac just said, let her rip chip. 68 for the rematch, Shorty. I'm still proud of you for just getting by him. Lefty Holman has a horse that everyone dreams of drawing. This is Billy from Pete Car Pro Rodeo. They won this rodeo a year ago on this horse. Then you grab her head around that. Pull it to the right. Like that. 
Well, let's just pull around real easy, boys. That was real easy. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. Oh, I'm the Get it right. I don't even got my leg back. Hold on. Let's just get her right. I don't even got my leg back. Oh, you're scared? Come on. Oh. Alright, show them what you got whenever you can. Maybe take that. Okay. I can get her out. Is that her? I want to get her off this shit. Don't lack back here. Come on, Billy. Come on, baby. Alright. Come on, Billy. Hey, let's not piss her off. Yeah. Stand up. Can you just twist her head stay up there? Kenyon, you're doing a great job. All right, there you go. That's inside the huddle, folks. Come back here. Come back here. And I think he said something to the effect that he didn't want to tick her off. Yeah, it was close to that. And uh, looks like we might be rolling forward to go to Brody's to make moves so that we can move Billy into the chute that Brody's horse is in. So they're gonna roll that horse a little bit to free her up. In the meantime, Brody Crest begins to climb aboard. And this will be our third rematch now, Bobby T. Three rematches. Now, Brody's been 88 already once on this horse. Sage Newman was 89 at the Pendleton Stampede. Now, you, you, folks, you're not going to get to hear this at any other rodeo in the country that I know of. You got to listen to four guys trying to help Lefty Holman to get old Billy up. This is as real raw. Come on, okay. For those of you on television, I know you're going, I've got to go to that Houston rodeo. Yes, you do. It is a destination in the world's oh, third largest city. Here you go. Whoa! Lift! Woo! Rip your neck! How many other guys, if they were staring straight up at the ceiling, every jump would be bucked off? Usually you land where you're looking, but he is able to bring his chin back each and every time. Watch this. Staring straight up, but he will tie at the top. 86 and a half for Kress. Andy, that was awesome. You couldn't have called it any better. He couldn't have. That was so right on. Normally, if you can't see what's below you, you don't stay on it. So we're going to move forward to Chase Brooks. Did you tell me, you, you mentioned him in the open. What, what is it about the, that you were holding something back? Well, I, I didn't want everybody to know that he's on a two-time world champion bucking horse. This horse used to be in the bareback riding quite a bit, and that's where this horse was a world champ. But as he's aged, they like him even more in the saddle bronc riding. Well, he smoothed out. Rider right was 86 three weeks ago in San Antonio on this horse. Here you go, M-O-N-T-A-N-A, -A, Montana Perfect. There is the rhythm, Boyd likes to call it textbook. You get the same trip every time from Dirty Jacket of Pete Carr Pro Rodeo. That horse, it, it's like watching the same ride over and over again. He's as honest as the day is long. 86 points for Brooks, moves him to number three. Now, and now 78 or better. And we said that from the beginning. We thought at least 83, just based on what the bareback riders have done. Here we're back with Billy and Lefty Holman. Listen in. Get your strong start. Get your good mark out. Got some fun, Lefty. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Come on, Billy. Come on, Billy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, 
He and Mike Todd see the judge in the back with the blue scarf. They're talking it over. Look at the rerides. Yeah, they're showing him what the rerides are. And we'll go to Brody Wells. Powell, Wyoming with a little secret agent. So just to follow up on Bob's point, they're having a conversation with uh, Lefty Holman because that horse did not leave twice. Lefty could take him a third time, but if he doesn't leave, he'll forfeit his opportunity for a re-ride. Or he could give him up now, which he really doesn't want to do because they won this rodeo last year with a 93 on that horse. So what he'd really like is for Billy to leave the bucket shoot, and we'll see what he decides. They're going to roll him again. You can tell by the fact that they're moving their stirrups over the back of that saddle in the meantime. Back in rodeo Houston bucket shoot number 10, a Powell, Wyoming cowboy on an NFR horse called Secret Agent. Another car pro rodeo bucket horse. Keep going, Brody. Oh, a perfect bronc grain measurement, and he sticks the landing. Now, sadly, you don't get any extra points for that, but watch. His left hand, he pushes it forward. He's not pulling on that horse's head. When he pushes it to the front, that's his fulcrum point that keeps him in the middle. He's now on the cut line, 83 and a half, sticking that landing. Cool. And he's also stuck in fourth place with three guys to go, which means he's got to withstand three great bronc riders who managed to be the top four in their super series. Leave it open. We're going to get okay. it Okay. Lefty has opted to forfeit his re-ride opportunity, I believe. He's going to stay on Billy, and that means when this gate opens up, you all need to start cheering at the top of your lungs. Tell Billy we want to see your buck. Go on with it. Go on. Come on, Billy. There you go. It works. I'll tell you one thing, that kid made a businessman's decision that could have worked either way. And look at him set his feet. He said, I don't care where you go, what you do, I'm going to spur. Got to be more than 83 and a half if you're going to make the cut. No, 82 points. So the cut remains 83 and a half for the next man to watch. Tanner Butner of Daniel, Wyoming, on a rematch from Fort Madison, Iowa. He was 83 and a half on Small Town Scandal. Number 14 in the world. Sounds like my high school career. I've got pictures. I think you did pretty right. good. Please stop, both of you. Well, qualified to his first national finals rodeo last year. You didn't say what he was in Fort Madison. He's 83 and a half. And that's exactly what he needs to be to bump Brody. I just want to take the tiebreakers out of it. Well, Brody won 4,000, Tanner won 5,250. So Tanner would win the first tiebreaker, 83 and a half. And Tanner bumps Brody Wells. Oh, little Dapple Gray with a move to the left and a move back to the right. And the cowboy that's originally from Idaho, he was a three-time Idaho state champion saddlebrock rider in high school. Now living in Wyoming as he rides professionally. And he had to be 83 and a half, and he was 82. It's the second time that's happened now. All and right, I got a shot to have you a flashback with Zeke Thurston. Yeah, let's go back, Bobby, and look at him back at his Super Series. He got on a horse named Ed Bishop. This is a look, and he was 88 points. Now, you have to understand, this is the reigning world champion saddle bronc rider. He's also the 2015 Rodeo Houston champ. And there he is being 88 points on Ed Bishop of the Survey Company. Today, though, it's Blood Angel. Also from the survey spirit. All right, this is the excess. These are the nine and ten-year-old horses. 
from the Survey Brothers. Blood Angels, they were 86 and a half on it, Denver. Sage Newman did that, Zeke, you can do it too. Score to advance, 83 and a half. For those of you watching, what do you think those long legs fired and said, Andy? That's textbook, Bobby. If you want a video to show you how to ride Saddle Bronx, this is it. Watch his toes turned out each and every time as those feet come up. It's what he needed to do, and he has done it. Eight, five and a half, and Zeke will move on. Well, you learned something just watching those 10 guys go. You learn something about do you take a re-ride or do you not? You learn something about the perfect style. Look at his upper body. Look at his feet set. Reach and get them before they hit the ground. What do you do when you get bowed over? Oh, my goodness. You bow back. There's the world champion from 016, Jacob Crawley. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, his eyes are rolled back in his head, folks. That's a rip, and did he quit? No. Well, Ryder said, I don't want to draw him again. Zeke said, I like him. Or Isaac, Shorty. Sorry it didn't work, buddy. Cream rises to the top. Moving on from our first semifinals with an 86 and a half. Brody Cress at the top, tied with Isaac Diaz. Then it's Chase Brooks and Zeke Thurston. We will see you on Sunday. Energy Transfer brought to you the Saddle Bronc Riding. Coming up next, we're Steer Wrestling, or as Boyd would call it, Cattle Tackling. Hey, rodeo fans, join today's Chick-fil-A Houston Selfie Race. Three lucky fans will battle it out across Houston, making their way to the finish line right here in NRG Stadium. Here's how to play. Step one, take a selfie, and here's the best way. Step two, upload your selfie on Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag Rodeo Houston. The, the race show. will take place in just a few minutes, so send in your selfies now. Welcome to the show. All right, I want y'all to text the win. It's time for your entertainer trivia. Answer the question on the big screen right now correctly for a chance to win season tickets to the 2024 Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. If you're taking a trip, why don't you take a trip to the Fan Zone? It's presented by Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, and we've got two of them, sections 103 and 124. You can see our champion saddles at both locations and possibly pick up a beautiful Rodeo Houston buckle. Oh, if you're on the screen, you need to wave or take a picture of yourself on the screen. Welcome back to Houston, Texas, inside Energy Stadium. Oh, the crowd is packing in. We'll be well over 70,000 souls in this room before the night is done. Steer wrestling, cattle tackling, got what you want. Mattress room helps you sleep good after you do it. Hunter Keir, the Texas Tech Red Raider, finally scratched this off his bucket list last year. The two-time champion of the world left with the Houston saddle. I don't know, man. I got my guts telling me to watch Jacob Talley. But you've got the reigning world champion, Tyler Wegas, back, and Clayton has has been doing really well in Houston. Here's a Houston champion from 019, 4-2, and he broke the barrier. Just like we saw in uh, the team rugby. Dang. Trying to put pressure on the rest of the field. You're first. You don't know what the other nine guys are going to do. So you got to ride at that barrier line, and Josh Garner, did not get by it. Here's a second look at it right here from where the steer exits. 2019 champ starts with a broken barrier, 14 and two. You go with one Bridger, I'll follow your Bridger behind you. Sounds good to me. Stevensville, Montana's Bridger Chambers. 
34 years young, standing six foot five tall. Reaching out, will turn him and throw at six and two. That's how I messed up. It's all right. We're good. I'll take a 6-2 because that's your Bridger. Now my Bridger's going to beat him. Even though they're both from the Northland, Bridger Anderson comes from Carrington, North Dakota. Been going to college at Northwest Oklahoma State University at Alva. There you go. Not right. Reach good. Hits could be good. Yeah, buddy. If he hadn't have broke the barrier, have we explained that enough to you? You get a shot and watch it in the replay. See that horse charge that line? That little piece of rope to the left end of it proves that he did not let that steer trip the line in front of him. That is 10 seconds and that's what it looks like when you just blew the shot of the night. Boy, that was a good run. Well, listen, we've seen stranger things, right? Finishing the top four. Jacob Talley, Keechai, Louisiana. Down and dirty. There it is. And he's clean at the line. That much I'll promise you. You saw it at the start. There it is. Steer tripped it. This guy's just been on fire. And Keechai, Louisiana, with that left uppercut, has just moved to the top spot. 4.8. Now. 14 and 9 are quicker, or actually 15 and 2 are quicker to move on. Riley Duvall, Dakota, Oklahoma. 5,000 to good from our fifth Super Series. Young man is creeping up on the million dollar mark from the famous Duvall family of steer wrestlers. Started out as a two time high school national champ. Won Sykeston, Missouri a year ago. Made four trips to our Super Bowl, the National Finals Rodeo. Love me some Sykeston. I love this bay horse that he rides. One of the better steer wrestling horses out there. Puts him right in position. Clean start. Get up, Riley. Get to your feet. Has to change the direction of the steer and will do so at nine and six. And that makes me very nervous. All right, let's get in nervous. When you look at all of these other champions, what they've won, the number five man in the world currently, Tucker Allen from Oakview, California. Folks, this kid's only 23 years old and he's had a good winter. He's won the City of Industry in Southern California, Brawley at the Cattle Call Rodeo, Red Bluff, California Circuit Finals, the end of the year. And look how calm he appears to be. I say appears. 23 years old. Luke Branquino trained. I've seen him win San Angelo and Dodge City. Oh, get you some of this one, Tucker. Oh, the West Coast on the mark. Six and three. We'll bump him to the number three spot. Riley Duval drops to number four. All the broken barriers are now out. Garner and Anderson are headed to the wild card round. And any other Bulldogger you watch tonight has to beat nine and six at this juncture. That was, seems easy. No, no it's, it's not easy. And Trell Etbauer is one of those guys that I would love to see win this rodeo and have one of his better shots at qualifying to his first national finals at 38 years of age. One over 3,500, and he's got a hard running steer. Bails off, now has to hustle. Seven and three, that is now on the bubble. Seven and four, seven and four, that is our cut. And there was Wade. Okay, folks. 
It's one thing to be a four-time and reigning champion of the world, but how have you done in Houston in the past? Have you ever done any good here? Oh, 2017 champion of Houston. 2018 super shootout champion. And his lovely bride, Sarah Rose, she's made the semifinals in the barrel racing too. So it's a family affair. We're Tyler Weggis back. Squaring in behind the line on the Palomino Pony. 7-4 or faster for the champion of the world. Here comes Weggs. Down dirty, jump, slows him down. Six and one is going to put him in the number two spot. Oh, we just keep raising the bar, guys. Clayton has, we asked him, what do you think about when you back your horse in the box? When I'm back in the box, I just take a deep breath, eyes wide open, and do my, try to do my job the best I can. I mean, everything happens so fast, and you're talking about two cowboys, three farm animals, and heck, everything's got to go right. Well, can you be six flat? Six three or faster if you're going to move Tucker Allen. I like your idea, though, Bob. If he's six flat, he doesn't have to worry about it. No. Just, just blow the rest of them out. There's only one guy to go after him. Why don't you just go be four seven, big boy? My hometown of Weatherford, Texas. They're off. Did he get out? It was close. Woo! Four seven. Told you, told you. Nostra Tallman calls it four and seven and a half. Is going to be moving on to Sunday. You can't camouflage the talent that that man brought with him tonight. Wide open, eyes wide open, 90 mile an hour. Hey, hey, Parker County. We're in the lead and go to Cody Devers. National finalist in 2021, Balco, Oklahoma. Six foot one, 230 pounds. Could be a middle linebacker. Instead, he's a bulldogger. Richard Chambers is going on, man, here. I said, if this boy is 6'1 or faster, actually, let's look at the money one. Bridger had 5,000. Yeah, he's got to beat Bridger. So that means 6'1 or faster. If Cody Devers wants to go straight to the championship round, got to be 6'1 or faster. Oh, he's in place to do it. Oh, how about that? It is getting crowded at the top. Is he clean at the line? Because if he is, yippee ki yay -a. The Perryton, Texas Cowboy. Oh, well, Balco, Oklahoma. Oh, my. They call this the big man's event. And the big men showed up. Look, almost all these guys are over six foot tall. And size is important. But what matters is technique. Hard running horses. All right, flying cowboy. Pally was the first one to crack the five-second mark. He didn't know there'd be two other guys that would crack it as well. Left horn down, nose up. Grimace, grit. And clap your hands when you know you've done it right. And that's exactly what Clayton has did. These gentlemen are moving. Notice I use the word gentlemen. They are heading on to the championship round. Devers, Hass. Pally and Vegas back. That action was brought to you by our friends at Mattress Firm, proudly sponsoring the Steer Athlete. Stay close. The ladies are making their turns in the barrel race at Rodeo Houston. Wondering what to do after the show? Head outside to a one-of-a-kind beer garden and enjoy the official beer of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo at the Miller Time Bar. The 
discover a unique rodeo oasis. Come unwind with a hard seltzer or beer at the Topo Chico Hard Seltzer's Backyard. And if you've worked up an appetite, head on over to the ranch for a casual or fine dining experience. So stick around. There's plenty to do and something for everyone at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. All right, I asked you to text a moment ago. I want you to check the screens for the answer to the trivia question. The winner will be announced on March 19th. It's time to have a little fun with the Hey Dude Cowboy Camp. There's our buddy Leon Coffee. Let's. Oh, what are you looking for, Leon? Oh, you. Oh, there's some horns on your friend. Hey, dude. Bringing you the world's lightest yeah. shoes, the world's most comfortable, cushiony, lightweight shoes. Hey, dudes, because sometimes even your boots need a break. Oh, there you go. Nice looking cowboy hat, man. You guys are rocking right. with the Hey, Dude Cowboy Cam. Well, we got to go. Hang on, man. We're about done. Hurry. Come back to us, please. The ladies are in the house, and they're about ready to watch the first cowgirl competition of semifinal number one at Rodeo Houston. That, of course, is the barrel racing competition brought to you by s &B Engineers and Constructors. Jordan Briggs coming off her world championship campaign. Came to Houston and won it all. There's the NFR champion from a year ago, Shelby Morgan. Shannon McReynolds has been doing some good here, too. Keep your eyes on Cassie Mowry. It's going to be good watching. The race is on. Up the alleyway at NRG Stadium is the number 10 cowgirl in the world, Alyssa Riley of Heiko, Texas. Texas Circuit Finals champ. Won a little more than three grand on a beautiful shiny bay horse. Two good turns. It's too quiet. Oh, no. Still knocked down the third barrel, 1984, for that five-second penalty after knocking down the final barrel. The penalty in this deal is a guarantee to the wild card. Now ease the horse in, Shelly Morgan. Northeast Texas. Here is the National Finals Rodeo WPRA champion. He came out of Super Series number two nearly 10 days ago. Now to the left, it's good. Oh boy, Texas, your lady, you're good. Go, go, go. Well, the four time qualifier is now going to set the pace at a 1472, boys. Pretty good pace. Brock, Texas is Andrea Busby. She is next to come up the alley. Won the Cheyenne Frontier Days last season. Also won the Larimer County Fair and Rodeo in Loveland. She'll start with a left-hand turn, finish with two to the right. Two right-hand turns. Come on, Andrea. You're going to have to be in the 14s to stick around. 15, 15, 15, 15 for Andrea. All right, let's go to another Texas standout. This is Sissy Wynn. She's currently number four in the world. She won $4,000 back in Super Series number three. Texas Circuit Champion, Texas A&M graduate as well. Tight corners, straight line, Miss Sissy. Let old Sarley go. All ties for the lead. 1472. As win helps raise the bar. Well, for those of you new to rodeo, you may not know Emma Charleston, but you better get ready to keep watching her. Breakaway roping and barrel racing. Here is the Great Lakes Circuit Champion. She rides, she ropes. Now she needs to hear from you. Atta girl, Ams, 1544. 
That puts her on the bubble. Out of four slate. So we talked earlier about the arena crew and uh, how important they are. Right now, what we're doing is, after the fifth barrel racer, we're going to come in and rake the ground, uh, provide a little more stability back to that dirt to make it a little more fair for the next five girls that have to follow the first five. So that arena crew working hard. The great look at how far the first barrel and the second barrel yeah. are from the fences as well. Yeah, it's about from here to Conroe. <laughs> Leon. Cassie Mowry of Dublin, Texas. She's perfected this pattern before. 2017 Rodeo Houston champ. Won San Antonio this season. Gets the Bay Horse past the second. Come on, Miss Mowry, we need your energy. 14.73. By one one hundredth of a second, she now sits third, and that fourth spot is 15.15. Our next lady comes from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. She has won two rounds at San Antonio. I've seen her on the Cowboy Channel for the interview. Cricket Ginter. Oh, close. You're all right. Smooth it out. That's too close. All right, if you're going to do it again, now put the whoop, whoop, whoop. That a girl. 15, 13. Maybe she should have got to the whip quicker. Just a quirk. Not a whip. <laughs> so another one coming out of Super Series number five that we just concluded yesterday is Tacey Matthews. She's number 18 in the world. She won 3750 bucks in Super Series five. Arkansas Cowgirl, the Razorback, lifts her leg to get by that left-hand turn. Got to be faster than 1513. 1513 or faster, and she did it. 15.02 is now going to put her in the advancing four spot, but she's got two high octane cowgirls left to run. La Luz, New Mexico, Shannon Griffin, 5,500 to the good. Turquoise circuit champ slides by the second. Checking up at barrel number three. And it will be close, but just a touch too long, 1569. We'll see you in the wild card. All right, right out of the Badlands is Lenham, South Dakota, come Summer Cozell. You watch this lady in that multicolored shirt. Woo! Be in the breakaway roping as well. She's a hand. Get him up, get him up. This little lady set the record in Cheyenne, Wyoming. 26th in the world a year ago, push 1501. By one one hundredth of a second, she did it. You can't get any closer than that. Faster than a snap of your fingers. Every stride. Every step matters. It's not just tenths, it's hundredths of a second that determine who advances and who has to take the tougher road of our wild car. Keep hustling, ladies. The four that hustled the best, Shelly Morgan and Sissy Wynn, along with Cassie Mowry and Summer Cosell, will move on to Sunday as we give our gratitude to s &B Engineers and Constructors for sponsoring the barrel racing. And seeing you like cowgirls so much, we do too. Let's move on to their next competition, the Breakaway Roping, uh, sponsored by Oxy. Last year's champ, Erin Johnson. You will see her tonight. She's here to defend uh, her Rodeo Houston title from a year ago. 
but keep your eyes out. Oh, there's so much talent here. Sarah Angeloni, the WPRA all-around champion. Cheyenne Gilroy, Daniel Lohman, who had a great Super Series 5. This is, uh, again, like the rest of this rodeo tonight, it has been awesome from a product standpoint. Here is the reigning world champion, Martha Angeloni. She's got to set the pace. Look, reigning champ of the world, we talk about this in the steer wrestling, we talk about it in the team roping. When you're first to go and there's nine behind you, you got to push. All right. Purple is for power. This is Amanda Coleman. She lives in Stephenville, but came out of Andy's country in Florida. That's Siler Rodeo country. Now, she ended up 19th in the world last year. She came out of Super Series number two, three swings. That's the way you rope them. Good. Amanda, 3.8. All right, gentlemen. There's your $3,000 mark at the moment. That one has me nervous. You know, you just don't know what the other athletes have drawn. And with a name like three-time world champion and defending champion, Aaron Johnson, three and eight, it's kind of tough to make a promise. Aaron comes out, aggressive throw, and ties it. 3.8. And just like that, Aaron is in the number one spot because of money earned. Yeah, but to your point, 3-8 with all these left to go. For example, Sarah Angeloni was the only breakaway roper to sweep her series. She won first. No, she did not sweep it, did she? Yeah, she won first twice. That's right. Angeloni got $6,000 on a Super Series 3. Number 13 in the world right now. And here we go. She got out. There you go. Crack the whip. There it is. 3.2 for Miss Sarah. And for the moment, she breathes easy. Sitting in the number one spot. Well, from the same home country, North Texas at Lipan. McKenna Hickson. Top 30 in the last year. She wants to be in the number one spot at Rodeo Houston. There, she didn't wait very long. Let the black horse get a hold. Oh, no. Big loop. What do you say? It's a no time because the calf stepped through the loop, so no time. Shucks, darn, hecky. All of the above. Top 15 cowgirls in the world. Hecky? Hecky? Yeah. Oh, he put a Y on the end of it? Yes. Oh. New word. Yeah. <laughs> Add it to the dictionary. Been using it since I was five years old. Top 15 in the world. Qualified to the national finals. Jordan Joe has been there before. But she's currently 16. Wants to add to her total. 3.6 will put her second. Oh. And now three and eight becomes the time to beat. And Aaron Johnson uh, is, is can, st can stand one more three point eight. Amanda Coleman cannot. Let's go to oh my gosh, Bobby T. You know this one, Jackie Crawford, twenty-time champion of the world, all-around breakaway roper, tie-down roper, team roper. She earned a ride here out of Super Series number one, but three eight or faster for Jackie. She now has the luxury of knowing what she has to do. To the horse's ear. Straight up, she lays that barrier back, I believe. Don't nope. broke it. Right? Did she break it? She's happy. I didn't think she broke it, but the it is clean. Penalty came up on the screen, and I was like, no way, she laid that thing back. Anyway, the good news is, is it was clean and penalty free. Crawford takes the lead at a 2.7. Boy, is she having a week. The last 10 days. Wow. Okay, Danielle Loman. 3-8 or faster, you can do this. You look about intense. You can do this. No. I figured if anybody could reach 
and get it done. That was the lady that would do it. She's a, I mean, that lady can rope in the pasture, rope in the brush. She's a hand. Well, we saw that loop she threw the other night to be 2 7. So, yes, you're exactly right, Bob. Kingston, Oklahoma's Cheyenne Gilroy must be quicker than 3 and 8. The number two cowgirl in the world who just won Fort Worth. I think that horse doesn't feel what's running through her emotions right now. Hard running calf. 3.7. By one tenth of a second, she now sits on the bubble with one more to sweat. And that also means we just kicked our defending champion, Aaron Johnson, to the wild card round, along with Amanda Coleman. And now the final gunner to go, Samantha Fulton, uh, Miller, South Dakota. Her maiden name is Jorgensen. Oh, no. And uh, Samantha, last to go, tried to be quick, and it just would not work. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have watched a lot of beautiful ladies, talented horsewomen. But in this event, we not only say ride a good horse, you got to rope a good calf. And there is the champion of champions. That's the way it's done. You just got to do it about two tenths quicker. Oh, and she looks back and she thinks back. Could it have been? There's Jackie petting that horse saying you have done my you've done my heart well. Jackie Crawford, 2-7, Sarah Angelone at a 3-2. Jordan Joe, congratulations, Cheyenne Gallery. You're in there. And it was all brought to you by Oxy. It is worth the price of admission, so stay stay so close. Bull riders are bucking up. Next. Check out the best seats in the house. We call them the shoot seats, presented by Hess. They're right behind the bucket shoots. Visit the Fan Zone, presented by Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. It's at sections 103 and 124. Take a picture with your favorite rodeo stars or get an autograph. You can also pick up a Rodeo Houston belt buckle. Houston Methodist is the official health care provider and proud supporters of your Rodeo Houston sports medicine team. And joining me now from that sports medicine team, Dr. Kelly Larkin. And Kelly, tell us a little bit about your amazing team here at Rodeo Houston. So we have it comprehensive medical team and we're here to take care of our rodeo athletes before they perform and if they have any injuries we're there to take care of them after and you talked about the before and after a lot of times before you're doing preventative things but you also get cowboys that might come in from another rodeo somewhere else that you're trying to get right for this one that's true it's pretty common they come in from another rodeo they may have injuries we work with them to get them in the best shape they can be to ride we have taken care of guys with broken tailbones, broken ribs. We tune them up, we get them out there to ride, and we've seen many of them go out and win their Super Series. Well, you do an amazing job, so thank you so much. Thank you to the Rodeo Houston Sports Medicine team, and thank you, Houston Methodist. There is an awesome view from the time to that end, looking down to the rough stock end of NRG Stadium uh, as it hosts Rodeo Houston. Uh, we are finally there, folks. Bull riding time. And uh, Whataburger at Texas Institution. Gonna bring it to you, Stetson Wright. Watch this bull, it's gonna be out tonight. You see that bull? Stetson was 93 on that bull last year, and that is the last bull to go tonight. So you'll get to see him again. What have I said for every one of these lineups? Nothing but talent from top to bottom. Well, as you're watching tonight, thinking about who's going to save your life, there they are. On the left, the GOAT himself, the greatest of all times, Dusty Douglas. In the middle, the toughest guy to get on his, get him off his feet, Nate Justice. Good for you, but I want you to look at the two serious guy. Hey, smile, will you? There he goes. Bo Sheets. Bo Sheets, the fastest in fleet. 
And our buddy, the Grand Marshal, the Pro Rodeo Hall of Famer, your barrel man, Leon Coffey. What, 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 what's the matter, Leon? What's the matter? Oh, there's a little dust on the limb. Yeah. Way to fix it up. Lord knows you're good with makeup. That's for sure. Shoot number six for T. Parker, Winnie, Texas. Number 14 in the world on Vital X Flight Risk. Come on, T. Come on, T. You got it. Oh. A little defined gravity at 6.83 seconds. We'll have to wait and see because I'm not sure we'll ride four bulls. So they'll advance on the tiebreakers if we don't ride four. Now to give him something, a second more for Spike in the landing. You know, there's a word that we've used this whole rodeo that I want to point out. Brady Poitnier, grimace is the word. Call that. And you know, nothing would give you a bigger grimace on your face than getting bucked off a bull named Soccer Mom. Soccer Mom. Think about this. This bull has been bucked 10 times. <clears throat> Have you ever ticked off a soccer mom? No, I, well, I do me just give me I a little suggestion. Ball. little suggestion. Do not tick off a soccer mom. Okay? They can be dangerous. Well, in the 10 times they bucked him, he has not been ridden. Because 10 guys ticked him off. All right, Portnier. Make the soccer mom happy riding for the first time. 11 and 0. Run, Brady. Well, the average score on soccer mom is like, they mark him like 43, which means if you ride him, you're going to be 86 or more. And so far, we're 0 for 0. Okay, Brady's down, Tristan's down. Here comes Jacob O'Mara from Holden, Louisiana, and you're watching him warm up the rosin on his handhold. You saw his hand and his gloves stick into the rosin. He's a veteran bull rider at 31 years of age. He's got a bull that's 18 and three. 83% buck off is a percentage for the bull. And here at this rodeo, he's been out twice already in our first 16 days. And he's bucked off Brody Yuri and Colby Radley. His name, the Wild Side. Whatever it takes. I think I know him. Or at least I remember him from the 1980s. Fuck! No, 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 no. Okay. He was thinking about going back to the left, and there was nobody to take around there. His hand pops out right here. His hand will pop loose, and that is the end of the day for Jacob O'Mara. As the bullfighters step in, take the bull away, no score for Jacob. See you Friday or Saturday. Now you see that mustache back there? You're fixing, fixing to see it a little bit later on. All right, I got a flashback for you with Jeff Askey. Comes out of Super Series number three. This would be the bull called the Silver Bullet. And he is going to be 88 and a half points. Well, it's a, it's a good, yeah, the bullfighters were there too. <laughs> good shot. This 35-year-old is having just one of the best seasons of an already storied career. He's number one in the world. Aiming to stay there. Lawn dart. <laughs> Folks, it's one thing to get bucked off. It's another thing to get slammed down. And that bull slams this guy. It isn't like he just kind of bounces off. I mean, they cracked him like a whip. Boy, that'll take the next three rides out of you right there for about two days. <laughs> All right, so we've had nothing but Americans so far in the bull ride. Let's try a Canadian, Jordan Hansen. Oh, it's Cold Core Boy. Listen to him. Uh, 
This bull always does that. He's calling Bob's name. I raised him, I know. Shouldn't have weaned him so early. 88% buck off rate for the chore boy. And that is the second bull in a row that gets you on the end of your arm and whips him down. All right, we're halfway through the deal. Everybody at home, get on the edge of your seat. Everybody in NRG Stadium, get ready to cheer. Folks, we're not just trying to make noise. I want to tell you something. You do make a difference when you help them. They absolutely do, but we're getting to the softer part. So, for example, here's the buck off for the first five bulls. 80%, 100%, 83%, 86%, 88%. Now this bull's got a 74% buck off. The next one's got a 71%. The one after that has a 76%. So these bulls are ridden at least 25% of the time, a lot better than the ones that we started with. So, so you're saying there's a chance. That's not theory, that is a fact. J.B. Mooney was 88 and a half here on this bull. White trash. But the bull will make compost out of Hay's weight and send him to the recycling bin. No score for the Utah Cowboy. That bull stacked up for about three jumps and when he figured out it wasn't gonna work, that's when he changed his direction. Left foot did not have a hold of him, and goodbye, goodbye, hey. Okay, Cole, you realize you could win it all, just become the first guy to ride. On a bull that bucks off 71%, he's bucked off Bubba Gregg and Jesse Flores here. Cole Wagner, Valley here, Montana. Oh, there go the feet. Watch his left leg. That's the inside leg of the direction the bull's turning back. So the bull's gonna turn back to the to the left. Watch his left leg. See how it came back off that rope? Right over the back of the bull. You can ride him with your hand, but you need your feet. And when your feet let go, look at his hand still in the rope, but his butt is on its way to the ground. It's time to ride one. Dawson Gleaves of Amarillo, Texas. He's got a rematch from a bully at in San Antonio. Centerfold bucked him off just a few weeks ago. But when they ride this bull, there are a lot of points. They average 87. Heck, Stetson Wright, the world champion, was 90 and a half in Denver on this bull. A qualified ride guarantees him to advance. But what a task it was to try and get by that one, boys. Well, folks, to become a resist all rookie of the year is a big deal in your career and in a lifetime. Oh, they're going to give you a third look at that. The TV people, that they like that stuff. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Bullfighters, good job. I, I just think they wanted to see the white boots again. But uh, <laughs> I, I, There's the white boots. Yeah, I'm with your story about being a resist all rookie. Well, the deal is not everybody that becomes a resist all rookie goes on to be one of the top ten in the world at the Wrangler NFR in the same year. This kid did it in 2021. He went back in 22. He's been there twice. He's 22 years old, but this bull roll tide is 100% buck off. We'd make history if we ride him here, folks. This would be the first time this bull has ever been ridden. Who wants to make that history in Houston today? Well, then you keep roaring when that gate comes open. You go crazy. You ready? Let's go. 
Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Come on! Yes, yes, yes! He did it! He made it! Now you tell him you're proud of him, Greek Young! Rogersville, Missouri! The old Brendel turns back into his hand and 76 points. I don't care. So listen, listen. This eight seconds is different to you and I. We asked the guy with the best handlebar mustache at Pro Rodeo. What does that eight seconds feel like? Explaining it, you know, the the adrenaline rush going through a person when you uh, you conquer an animal like that in a in such a stadium this big and you have all these fans and everyone going crazy, it's just, uh, you're on cloud nine, you know, there's no greater feeling. This is the bull they were 93 on. A year ago Sunday. Yellowstone. Chance shot. Under the road. Oh, he's more disappointed. He's hurt more emotionally than he is physically. But folks, watch your bullfighters. When you go off away from your hand, your hand will turn over in that rope. You're literally tied to the beast. Look at the, look at both sheets get on the head of that bull. And when he's free and clear, He's not even asking for a doctor. He's pounding the back of the bucket chute because he's mad he didn't make it to the whistle. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you witnessed maybe a miracle, maybe a god wink. You witnessed the unrideable animal get road tonight. You'll never see a better pen of bulls. And in the semifinals at Houston for all this money, if you didn't wear your riding pants, you wasted getting here. Look at these guys try. Look at the bullfighters. There it is. Catch him in the air. You got him right there, Chestis. There's the knuckle bump. That'll make you feel better from Bo. It's all about the resist all rookie, Creek Young. Jeff Askey will follow Chance Shot and Brady Portnier from Idaho. All of that was brought to you by What a Burger. Woo! Hang around, folks. My bad. Up next, the very special tribute to some of our favorite athletes. It is our distinct privilege to honor America's heroes. The men and women in uniform that make it possible for all of us to live in freedom and have pride for our country. Tonight, the Crown Royal Military Salute is proud to honor a United States Army Staff Sergeant. This is Raymond Minnick. Staff Sergeant Minnick served multiple deployments in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom. He was a part of the immediate response team in 2020 during the U.S. Embassy bombings in Iraq. Listen up. Again, in 2021, he answered in response to the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan. Staff Sergeant Minnick, years of dedicated service, earned him an impressive number of remarkable awards. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Staff Sergeant Minnick. Thank you for your years and dedicated service and sacrifice. Welcome back. You know, for generations, 
The Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo has welcomed professional athletes from around the world. And uh, they have come to compete and take part in one of the most exciting and celebrated events of the year. But the Cowboys and Cowgirls admit they'd be nothing on their own. They fully rely on their partners. And now Oxy is honored to present the other part of the team that these athletes cherish. The other part of their team that they love and fiercely protect, just like a part of their family. Like this mother and daughter. Fires Easy is 19 years old. She's a great grandmother. And for more than 12 years, she's been a smoking hot contender at Rodeo Houston. Joining her is her daughter. That's Fire Away. And she's just as tough in the arena, but in the pasture, she'll run up to you and nudge your hand to get you to scratch your nose. So you got a 19-year-old mother and a 12-year-old daughter, and they're loved and respected by the Cowboys and athletes that dare to ride them. But now meet the daughter of Fire Away. This is Fired Up. She was born in the middle of a freezing blizzard. But by the end of the first week of life, she was running and bucking through the snow drifts. And she is also the mother of the youngest member of this family that will follow in their footsteps. Say hello to Firecracker. That's right. You've got a great grandmother, a grandmother, a mother, and a daughter. Four generations of bucking horses. Now, some horses are born to run fast. Some are meant to work with cutting precision. But this family of athletes was born, look at her on the buck, to challenge its riders. Because bucking comes naturally to these Bronx, and it's our responsibility and our privilege to make sure they are cared for with respect and worth. Because they're a part of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo family too, and they represent both the legacy and the future of our rodeo. So let's give all of our human and animal athletes a hand. Can you do that? Thank you to Oxy. Oxy presents our Born to Buck legacy. And if you'd like to see these horses up close and personal, the moms and their colts, be sure to visit the Born to Buck exhibit presented by Oxy. It's just east of the Astrodome in the junction. Again, the Born to Buck exhibit presented by Oxy, just east of the Astrodome in the junction. You get up right next to the fence on these mares and these baby colts as they proudly carry on the family tradition of being great bucking horses. Oh, coming up next, it's the Cab Scramble. You better get ready. All right, everybody. Let's see who the Chick-fil-A champion is going to be. I've got three of them ready. They're going to launch them from NASA. And under the Be Someone Bridge we go. Here we go. Whoop. Right turn, Clyde. Ripped him right off his horse. There's that pesky bull. Come on. Chase him right to the carnival. Under the door. Here we're back in NRG Stadium. Howdy. You're in the way, Howdy. I told you, Howdy. Up. Good catch. Well, your Chick-fil-A champion of the day is Krista Lynn, 2009. Krista, you are the champion of Chick-fil-A. Hey, dude, how are your shoes? More importantly, hey, dude, how about our cowboy cam? Yes, we will put a cowboy hat on you. We will put a mustache on you. We uh, will, yes, we will put horns on you because the Hey Dude Cowboy Cam wants to turn everybody into a Hey Dude. So you can be a dude or you can be a dudette. Either way, we say thanks to the Hey Dude Cowboy Cam.
Well, if you think you've seen a lot of rodeo, this is going to be one on its own. We're on the floor with the calf scramble. Now, folks, it's brought to you by Rock and Roll Denim. Tonight, I want you to keep your eye out for the first scrambler to properly catch a calf and cross the line. That scrambler will have a chance to compete in the Super Scramble on March 19th. Let's go down now with Patty Smith. There's the master and the Siler nice jacket. Thank you, Bobby T. It's been dry clean. We have 14 young men and 16 young ladies all in 4-H and FFA in the calf scramble, and Patty's had a chance to visit with them. I want to know what you found out, Patty. Well, I found out we have a bunch of athletes, but I also found out that not too many of these kids have ever scrambled before, so this should be a fun one to watch. Let's meet the kids, starting with number one, Tori Atkins. Hannah Misseldine. Evelyn Arnold. Madeline Florence. Braylon Stevenson. John Earhart. Priscilla Bartholomew. Zane Hensky. Texiana Forker. Chloe Miller. Justice Colt Gutierrez. Creedon Rand. Grady Hudson. Darby Harrington. Lane Burke. Carson Adams, Jody Spillers, Angel Reyes, Ashley Muncie, Casey Shivers, Liam Ramirez, Galel Crooks, Bailey Smith, Aliska Shambera, Gabriel Bardwell, Addison Wilkerson, Brody Pitcock, Kayla Schneider, Mason Heckler, and Hayes Hart. Those are the Cavs Scramblers on night number 16. Now, each and every time we host our Cab Scramble, we call on two individuals to assist us in making sure that everything goes as planned. First is going to be our gate opener. Swinging the gate open for us tonight is Houston Texans quarterback, Case Keenum. And now our Cab Scramble starter, who will drop the hat to signify the beginning of our calf scramble. It is a fourth year calf scramble greeters committee chairman here with his wife Erica and daughters Kinsley and Riley. This is John Curley. Now John will hold that hat high up in the air so that each and every one of our calf scramblers can see it. When that hat comes down it signals to the scramblers that you gotta go catch one. The hat being held high. Wait for it. It drops down, let's go catch him! Night 16 is underway. And here they go, the cats are scrambling, the kids are all over it already, running hard. There's a look at number 18, he just missed, that's Angel Reyes from Crane County. We got one down here. Got to get that halter on just right. It only goes on one way. Got to open that loop up first. Around the nose, behind the ears. I believe that's number 30, Hayes Hart of Klein Oak FFA, and it is. There's a look at number six, John Earhart from Frisco. He shows tears in his spare time. He's one of our first timers. That was a good point to bring up too, Patty. How many of these youngsters are doing this for the first time as Creighton Rand of Lindale FFA got that halter on and is now stepping toward the box. And he also is a first timer. He does play football and runs the track. There's number eight, that's Zane Hensky from Riviera Coffer FFA. Shows Sears, plays baseball. That's enough. Sorry, that's number six, John Earhart of Frisco Memorial, looking to be the first catch. As those halters go on, who will it be? The Battle of Wills. Oh boy, what a mullet. It's not easy. That's a stubborn one out there. Come on, fans. Root him on. There we go. Good now job. it's official. Good job, number 15, Lane Burke. And number 6, John Earhart taking a little nap after all that work. And that, that 
Jets, number 29, Mason Heckler, another Klein Oak FFA member. He trains for MMA, actually. We asked him if he thought that would help, and he said, I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Little pulling on both ends as number 30, Hayes Hart, makes it an official catch with that final step. We still got a lot of calves out there and a lot of kids. I can't see them all. They're all kind of camouflaged in, but there are some catches still that need to be made. There comes number 22. That's Khalil Crooks. He was actually named after Superman. He just brought one into the box. That is 29, Mason Heckler, again, a fine oak FFA. Don't worry about the pants, we'll brace those later. Let's make the catch official. And that's number 17, Jody Spillers from Danbury. Now she has... Tonight, hate speech in a prominent Houston neighborhood. Homophobic hate speech, that especially in Montrose, is kind of double offensive. One man's mission to make his neighbors feel safe. That story is just minutes away. But first, how is it that HISD with a B plus yeah. is chosen to be taken over? The Texas Education Agency is officially moving into Houston ISD. What this means for the district moving forward. The water is completely covered. And the storm system that drenched the West Coast is now heading our way. We give you the stories you need to know in the first 15 minutes. Fox 26 News at 9 starts now. And good evening, everyone, and welcome into the first 15 minutes of Fox 26 News at 9. Tonight, we are getting you prepared for the upcoming weather Thursday that has the potential to get severe. Now, this is the same system that brought a lot of rain, flash flooding, and high winds to California. Meteorologist Ramisha Shade is...